Okay. Yeah, I was excited uh, today to get to see our guys go out and compete and uh, cut it loose and get to play without <coughs> coaches on the field. It's always the first time a year you get that like a little bit of butterflies. My coach and other telling me what to do, and um, we made a, a decision to go after, get after it Friday afternoon as well. So we uh, uh, we went in pads Friday and went outside and uh, challenged them, and then. Uh, turned around and practiced a little bit earlier today than, than what we've been doing. We typically scrub it, scrimmage Saturdays around lunch, but we practice around two or three in the afternoon. So um, it was uh, it was it was good. It was good to find out like okay, who really wants part of this? Who really wants to go out here and compete and get better? Um, so that part, I think we got to identify maybe some guys that are ready to play versus some guys that want no part of it because they can't sustain and keep their uh, their level of focus up uh, during the scrimmage, so uh, I was uh, I was glad that we got the conditions we got. We have an extremely long way to go as a football team. I think so many people make an assumption off of last year's team and their accomplishments that this team, number one, I asked them after the, the, the scrimmage and after we ran, what have you done to deserve anything you've gotten? And they, they've done nothing. I mean, they've, they've done nothing, and uh, we got to find the, the, the get the right guys in the right spot. Find the guys that can really tough it out and compete. You know, we, we may play four or five of our first four of five or five of five of our games uh, in what is tough heat, and I kind of hope we do because I want to see where we are as a team. And you find out a lot more about a team when you have to do kicking, offense, defense with 22 people on the field uh, of your team the whole scrimmage. And uh, I got to see a little bit of that, guys that pushed through and, and guys that just couldn't. I mean, they just physically could not push through and they're not ready to contribute yet. But with that, I think we'll open it up. I mean, I know you guys are going to ask about the quarterback position, but I can't tell you anything until I watch the tape. I can tell you that um, I would like to see all three of them play better, but the people around them have to play better. So when you evaluate a quarterback and you say, well, he threw an interception. Well, if it hit a guy in the hands and it bounced through his hands and got intercepted, you know, obviously we, we, we judge that. You know, if, we were, if there's seven drops during the scrimmage because of wet hands and heat, then you evaluate that. But I don't think any of those quarterbacks would tell you they played their best game. And I think we need each one of them to get better to get where we want to go. And a lot of that has got to do with, you know, cutting down some of the offense, deciding what we want to use, uh, and really focusing in on that. that. That wasn't today's goal. Today's goal was to find out who's got some toughness and uh, who can push through. If you have a question, raise your hand. I was, was going to ask for it if it was intense heat, you know, how they held up on that. And I, I think in particular the, uh, you know, one O line versus one D line, what, what kind of, did you get any uh, feelings off of that? It's the same typical thing, Chip. I mean, the, the 109 didn't start real well. I mean, didn't went three and out, and then maybe four or five and out. But then I don't know for sure, but I feel like the, the one offense kind of won the third down uh, uh, challenge. Uh, the red area was kind of a toss up, two minute. Um, the offense won. I mean, it's like back and forth. So I could say all these good things the offense did on the O line and all the bad things the defense line did, and then it flips back and forth. Um, I'm looking for a little more consistency. Um, I certainly think that we have a very talented uh, first group of O-line and, and maybe a couple backups. I feel like we got seven or eight guys that can play uh, winning football that I don't know that, that, that we got their best effort. Like if you just said, I'm going to grade our line on their practices so far, and then I'm going to grade them on this practice, I would have argued the practices up to this point have been a little better and a little more dominant than they maybe were today, at least in the run game, maybe not in the pass game. Um, but I, I, I'm pleased with the leadership of both those groups. Uh, I'm not pleased with like where we are. Yeah, on today, and you can include today. How has Carson done in terms of you know, managing the offense, executing? Um, I know you have a little trouble today. Oh, he does a really good job. I mean, all three of them do. Like executing the offense. You got to remember, all three of them were in it last year um, and have been in it for a while. The verbiage doesn't change. So like. They know and can execute the offense. The players around them have to make plays and they have to avoid catastrophe situations. Because, you know, we have a defense that, that, that causes havoc. We have a defense that can be disruptive in disguise. And there's going to be a player every now and then. You've got to get us to the next play. 
You don't have to make, you don't have to make a Superman play. You just got to get us to the next play. And, and I don't think that Carson or any of those quarterbacks don't understand what we're trying to do offensively or what we do to execute. They need 10 people around them functioning at a high level and a couple of those tend to make some you know, explosive plays for them. Yeah, Coach, when you have a very diverse quarterback room like you have, how do you go about A, installing a, uh, a portion of the offense that might be quarterback run oriented, and then B, how do you go about evaluating that when we're not tackling the quarterback in practice? I think the first part of that question I would disagree with because I don't know how diverse it is. You may feel that way or someone outside may feel that way, but I don't really see any of our three quarterbacks as a quarterback run uh, people. I mean, I don't see, I didn't see Stetson that way. Now, could Stetson run? Yeah, but we didn't design runs, maybe a few in the red area, but we didn't design runs. We don't really want our quarterback physically getting hit. And, it, it, and your question makes it sound like there's certain guys that we're going to have quarterback run packages for and certain guys we probably wouldn't. Not the case. Now, can one of them maybe run a little better than the other? Maybe a little bit, but I, I, these three guys are all three pretty good athletes. So I don't know how diverse, when I hear diverse, I think, oh, they're all three really different. They're all three really more the same than they are different. If you line them up in the 40, one might be a little faster than the other. One might be a little more instinctive in the pocket than the other. Uh, one might be just a, a better runner as like reading blocks because maybe he ran better in high school. But I don't see them that different. And we, don't, we will not have an extensive quarterback run package. We just don't. We're going to give the ball to our backs and we're going to throw the ball in the perimeter and let our skill players do things with it. Curry, with y'all putting the pads on this week, wanted to see where y'all were at from an injury standpoint, specifically Kamari, Kendall, and Ra Ra, who we saw separate from their position groups on Tuesday. Yeah, Ra Ra did everything today. He was good. I think uh, he had had a hamstring spasm, not a pull, and so we the, the, pack, the practice you were at, he practiced. He just didn't start with his position. Um, he's practiced each day, uh, hasn't missed a day, but he's been held out of portions. Um, Kendall has not been able to completely go. Um, but you know he's trying to get back best he can. Kamari's much closer with the with the foot sprain. Uh, Ty's much closer. Um, I mean I don't know y'all y'all always love to ask these questions. I'm not hiding from them. I just don't know who you're asking about somebody, and I'll tell you because we don't play for another two weeks, so I'm, I don't know what the paranoia is there. I mean, is there anybody else I'm missing? Chris Peel had a boot on. Chris Peel's got a, a turf toe that he's been battling, trying his best to get back from. He's not back yet. Kirby had the running back set. So Kendall couldn't go. I assume Branson Robinson, even though he's practicing, didn't go today. Yeah, Branson goes in individuals. So that's what you're seeing in the assumption he's back. But he is not cleared to go yet. He's uh, on track to get back earlier than we originally thought. But he's not back yet. But he does do individual because that's great exercise for him. That's reps. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, but no, he did not scrimmage. So how are you managing the running backs in, in terms of where you are uh, when the, the season starts? Dejan, Cash, uh, Andrew Paul, Rod Robinson, Savon Clark. That's five guys I know that, that JD, uh, Joseph Daniels, those guys, they all, they all get reps. So. In terms of when the season starts, we'll take a picture of what we have healthy and make a determination. But Dejon's doing a great job. Cash Jones is doing a great job. I think Andrew Paul is still trying to get his confidence back. I don't think he was 100% today. I think that was a, a big psychological hurdle for him to go out there and get tackled live and be able to do that. Rod had a real nice run and some good pickups lately. Um, I certainly think you know before the season's over, I don't know when, Branson's going to be fine. Kendall is hopefully going to be fine. So, I mean, we, we've got the backs we got. And, uh, you know, there's there's ways to be creative uh, around your running backs and, and use the skill players you have. Kirby, how do you feel the cornerbacks held up today, especially not having Kamari out there? Um, I don't know. I don't know that I can honestly say. I mean, it was uh, – I mean, there were some big plays hit. We gave up some plays, but we didn't. We didn't. People didn't get behind us. There was a couple plays that were behind us that that uh, were overthrows. Um, that I thought maybe we should have hit. Um, we did hit a, a couple big plays, but those, those weren't necessarily on the corners. I mean, our corners don't play man every down. They, they have downs where they're in the flat, and you know you might get behind a safety. So just because there's a bomb hit, it doesn't always go to a corner. It could go to a safety. It could go to the the, the protection and, and the rush, but. I think we have four guys, you know, get to play. 
Julian was a little under the weather. He was sick and cramping a little bit, so he he, had, he played, but he had less reps. And uh, you know, Kamari's dying to get back, but Kamari needs work. He started for one year, and he got to knock the rust off and be able to go out there and play too. There's no there's no assumption that just because you played last year that you're going to come in ready to play. I think people assume that, but these kids aren't NFL players that you know they've been playing for 10 to 15 years. So he he's got to get back and, and knock some of the rust off. I know you mentioned there are some guys who are ready to play and some guys who just aren't. Are there any, whether it's an individual or position groups, guys who did impress you with their readiness today? Mm, no. Can't say I was <laughs> impressed with anybody's readiness today. The, 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 the readiness come, came about third down period after about 66% of the practice was over. I thought that it ramped up and the competitiveness went up. But it wasn't like that earlier. So I don't know if they had just decided I'm going to push right through this and get through it. but. I didn't see a group that I was just like, ooh, man, they're dominant. They, they came out here today to really make the opponent not want to play them. I, I didn't see that. Yeah, Kirby, uh, Denylon Morissette is a guy that we haven't seen in practice. We've been at because one, is he dealing with an injury? Two, I mean, obviously he had a, a driving incident in the offseason. Is there an internal punishment going on? And is missing practice you know, in itself a form of, of an internal punishment to you guys? I don't know what y'all call it. Now he's going to join us when school starts. So I'll let you guys. And that's uh, Wednesday. So he's, he's been part of the team. He's been with us. He's just not uh, practicing. He's allowed to go to administrative programming. He's allowed to go to a, a lot of programming we've got in place for him and the whole team. So he does that each and every day. Kirby, can you comment on the defensive line? I know that was an area that you talked about at the start of fall. Yeah, uh, we got some really <laughs> tough, hard workers in there. I don't know that we have a dominant, disruptive, super hard to block guy. I think we've got to create that through our uh, athleticism on the perimeter and our athleticism at backer. But we have some guys who believe in the core values of our defensive program, which is to strike blockers, knock the hell out of them, knock them back. I think Jordan Hall is coming along. I mean, he, he had a tough day today. He's got to, he's got to grow up and be able to help us and, 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 and play and be disrupted. But we have uh, very good experience there and we have very good toughness there when you count Nas, Zelo, Warren, and uh, uh, you know uh, Jonathan Jefferson. Those guys have really pushed hard and, and give us uh, four quality SEC players uh, in there to, to help us. Kevin, what have you seen uh, at safety beyond you know your presumed starters um, in terms of Janelle and some of the other guys? How are they developing the you know, next level guys? Well, Janelle's working at Star. Did you say safety? Yeah, he's at Star. Yeah, he's been working at Star most of the time and haven't tried to uh, cross-train him with him being a freshman right now. Um, obviously, Bullard, David Daniel, uh, Malachi, and Dan a little bit. Dan's been uh, still injured. He had a little bit of a hamstring uh, pull there early in camp, like the, the first day, and he's been battling trying to get back from that. He, he, he scrimmaged today, but he couldn't go as much as he'd like to. Uh, Kaiki's got a little bit of uh, rep, uh, put plays there. I think Ja'Cory and Justin Rett are the guys that are like really battling to get in that rotation and play winning football. And I thought, you know, both of them made some plays today. Ja'Cory made a really nice play, and Justin Rett made really nice plays. But they both have a long way to go to. Yeah, Coach. The last two seasons, y'all opened with top twelve matchups. Do you sense, how do you avoid a sense of, you know, preparing differently because we're not playing Oregon or we're not playing Clemson? Yeah, I don't sense any difference because I, I we never talk about that. So, like, whether we play Clemson, Oregon, or the national championship game first, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about it. We just try to get better to us because we know we have multiple games to play after that. So, I know that's a big deal to people that say all season and all that. The kids aren't thinking about that. They're thinking about like, how can I lift today? How do I work out today? How do I scrimmage today? I mean, today was about playing Georgia. You know, you're not gonna play too many teams better than Georgia. So like, let's go, let's go play Georgia and let's worry about that and not who our opponent is. So do, does that concern me? No, not really. Cause I, I don't worry about who we're playing until nine days out. Uh, how is Raylan Wilson and did you come out injury wise okay? Yeah, Raylan had a hyperextended knee, um, but as of right now, I would reserve judgment until we know for sure. But uh, ligaments are intact, and uh, hopefully he'll be fine. Um, it was a scary play, but uh, he seems to be fine. He walked off the field on his own, um, and Ron feels good about it. But you know, you never know. You got to 
do all the due diligence. But coming out of it, I think uh, we had a couple guys get, get a couple ankles, um, but I don't, I don't know that we had a significant injury other than uh, than Raylands, and I don't you know I don't know how long it'll be, but it's we don't think it's ligament damage. How has Smile come along to this point in camp, and has there been any progress as far as him getting? Yeah, Smile's been great, man. He works really hard every day. And uh, when you're dealing with that kind of injury, it's a very sensitive injury. You know, it's one of those deals that you have to be patient with. We knew that when we found out about it in the spring, the very end of the spring. We knew the minute that he had it, it was a long-term deal that he was going to be fighting. He's fighting what, similar to what Dan Jackson had uh, and also fighting what uh, Xavier Sori came in with as a freshman. So luckily we caught it uh, a little bit early and we were able to start. I mean. The worst thing would have been happened to, to not catch it and then figure it out and fall camp. Um, so uh, he's doing really well. He's running on the side and um, he's he's on on progress. Good time for two more questions. As the quarterback competition you know continues, what do you want to see out of these guys to learn one of them can separate themselves? Consistency. I mean, accuracy, consistency. Those are the things that, that always come out. And if you're accurate in our offense, you're going to have some easy free throws. Uh, decision making, you know, uh, third down, you know, because we're going to get put in some third and ten, third and six, third and eight. What you do on first and second down, I mean, it's, it's either a shot, it's there, it's not. It's either a boot or naked, it's there, it's not. It's a run play, and that's not a lot of the control of the quarterback. It's going to come down to who's accurate, makes good decisions on third down, and uh, who can be explosive. Hey, coach, I know it's tough to kind of figure out what's going on with the offensive linemen and stuff like that. But what have you seen from some of those tackles that are competing out there uh, recently? What have you liked from them? Uh, and particularly who? Uh, specifically Ernest Green, uh, Green and uh, Austin Blasky. Yeah, uh, Blasky's been battling uh, some injuries, some sickness. He got a little bit of sick. He got a little bit sick and was one or two days in there that he didn't get to practice. So when he's been there, he's done really well. He's been really competitive. Um, I think the heat's been really tough on him. He's, he's a fighter, man. He's one of the toughest kids I've been around. So uh, Ernest has gotten more reps than him uh, at the ones, but feel really good about Blasky. Trust has kicked out there and played uh, at tackle. Dylan Fairchild's played at tackle. Micah's played at tackle. Um, obviously, Amaris has been able to flip and play both. Uh, Monroe Freeling's a young kid that's come in and, and gotten better every day. So Chad stays out there and plays. So we, we have a kind of a, a working committee because the last thing you want is to not have a tackle ready to play in a game. So for us, we're always trying to develop that tackle position knowing that we've got uh, a lot of guards that can go in there and play. Thank you.